if anybody has any questions, I'll pass the mic around. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, nice explanation. So now we know what the problem is. You explained it very well. So my question is, what is the solution? And uh, number two, how to give a rebuttal? Yeah, so that's the solution. So let me answer that. So the way you can participate, help us, is that we are going to develop five or six small books out of this, each a particular part of the algorithm and how to refute it. So for instance, there'll be like a hundred page book on the attack on Indian tech education, Indian tech industry, what they are saying and what should be our Uttar Paksh, what should be our remedy. And this will go to not only all the students of engineering in India who may need it, who may be, have to defend themselves one day, it should be part of their education. It will also go to Silicon Valley and places like here, wherever there are tech people working, they should know. It should go to the Indian Ministry of uh, Technology. It should go to all the places that need to be sensitized. Similarly, there will be another book out of this, which is, which is going to explain to you the history and the, the realities of the flexibility of the Indian social structure so that people don't think it is all frozen caste system like that, which they are talking about, because they don't even know the difference between Jati and Varna and caste. They're all mixing it up. So we are coming up with small antidotes and we need funding for that. I mean, if Kona could do a collaboration with us, we could do, we could pick one of these and do it as a joint project. We could, we'd be happy to do that. So uh, that's something you can get involved in if you guys want, it's up to Kona, but we would offer that, that uh, we, we have so much material in this book to counter this, this is like an algorithm with so many different parts to it. And we can counter this, counter that, counter that. And each time we raise our awareness, the other side gets on the defensive. And our people get encouraged to talk back and take back the ground that we've lost. So that's the, that's the solution that we would like is help us spread more awareness and build these antidotes the rebuttals that we have in mind, which we want to do, we would like to get these done in the next three to six months, that fast. I'm going back to India in February, and I would like to launch some of these books. So help is most welcome. Question, why are they doing it in the first place? Are they afraid of Hindus, or are they afraid of a rising, stronger India? So that's a very common question I get. It's a very important, good question. So, you know, the clash of civilizations is an old thing. It's not uh, only with Hindus. I mean, there are every civilization wants to expand market share. The Chinese want to expand their market share, their ideology. The Muslims want to, the Christians want to, the global left wants to. So, the clash of civilizations is an old one. Hindus don't know the game because we never, we were not a player in the game. We were more on the defensive. Those who are expansionist, they don't ask this question, you know, why do we want to do this? They already decided they want to expand. And they now are looking at how to expand, how to train your people, how to look at others, how to knock them down, how to spread misinformation among others, confuse them, demoralize them. It's part of psychological warfare, you know, intellectual warfare. So the expansionist civilizations have been doing it for a very long time. They are good at it and therefore they are not confused strategically. And, and they're also very, uh, they're good at team building. Uh, they are good at team building because when you are, and when you're expanding, uh, you know, whether it's physical violence, whether it is converter conversion, whether it is grabbing old, old of other people's language and converting them or their religion and converting them, whatever the expansion is, you know how to read the other side, find their weaknesses, find their vulnerabilities, train your people do, to do good teamwork, have strategies. So they're doing all this. We are only now waking up to the fact that there is a, there is a war going on and we are losing. You see, we are in the middle of a war. Most of our people don't even think there's a war going on. They'll, they'll say, uh, you know, Vasudha Kutumbukam and they will all clap. Everybody will clap. And they just go home and say, you know, I'll go and eat my 
dal roti and uh, i have a nice car and i have a nice house and nobody bothering me so this is the level of uh, ignorance of many of our people of course rising india is further aggra- aggravating 15 years ago harvard populated all the top ceos in silicon valley and elsewhere there were no brown skin people taking those jobs indians were doing low level work now all of a sudden it's very recent that there are more indian tech ceos and senior executives in silicon valley than harvard products harvard graduates and this must be taking them off they hey you know who the heck are these people not only they taking our jobs at working level but now even at the top level obviously there is jealousy so there is multiple factors namaste rajiv ji uh, i got introduced to your books um, in arshvidya gurukulam about 14 years ago yes swami ji i really miss swami ji yes me too um my question and thank you for the nice talk it's always wonderful to read your works my question is um counter argument arguments those are amazing what would be your suggestion for getting ahead of this narrative why do we need to be on defense because if it's a war then defense is one of the strategy why not be ahead of the game and 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 put our talking points and let's hear those yeah so let me answer that so all these are great strategies and we have talked about them millions of times and our people are very good at abstract we come up with powerpoint slides come up with a proposal come up with funding mechanism come up with a think tank how to distribute this knowledge how to create it the point is in implementing it we have not been able to get the level of support the scale of support we require and to be honest with you the gurus have only preached goody goody defensive not let's go after them because we don't have a mentality to go after other people that's part of the tradition or at least recent times in the mahabharat we were going after each other they were we were going after others no problem in the ramayan we were going after others so when somebody tells you that uh, uh, ahimsa and vasudeva kutumbakam means that you put up with anybody's nonsense and we are supposed to be passive your answer should be that both itihas the ramayan and the mahabharat bhagwan himself comes to teach in one case he himself does the fighting against ravana and in the other case he teaches and conducts the war so fighting is a part of our dharma being part of this defending defending the dharma protecting the dharma is part of it and ahimsa doesn't mean that you put up with somebody else's himsa ahimsa is not a unilateral disarmament okay because you are better off finishing off one person who is about to kill a thousand people so we the logic our people have is all wrong okay it's a defeatist logic it's an other worldly logic it's not truly backed by our own shastras so if you want to be proactive and if you want to be ambitious and uh, uh, expansionist uh, there's nothing wrong in that but our society the people with the resources uh, don't support it believe me i spent 30 years thinking that i'll get all kind of support i'll give up everything for this cause and maybe many other people will do the same but it's not so easy not only the gurus but you look at the government you look at the culture ministry you look at the hrd ministry you look at all these kind of people they are very much uh, risk averse controversy averse that's how it is until i would say 15 20 years ago until 20 years ago i was having difficulty giving talks in hindu temples because they would not want controversy i was i would be declared a persona non grata that this guy will come and you know we don't want to hear all this we just want to do some bhajans and we want to teach some upanishad and all that i am by the way 
well trained well grounded in advait vedanta myself i do my meditation i'm a bhakti person also and but the point is none of that stops me from protecting my dharma in society and one of the most important persons who mentored me and made me do all this was actually swami dinand saraswati so i am and he was in the footsteps of swami chinmayanand and he was in the footsteps of swami vivekanand so we do have that okay but that's not what they they more interested in making sure that their revenue their donations their standing goes is okay and uh, you know that uh, they they'll be getting their awards and all of those things maybe they'll get the nobel prize they're more interested in these kind of things and so uh, the nuts and bolts of protecting the dharma has been ignored by the important institutions that have resources people who have the experience and the strategy and the courage to do it don't have the resources and people who have the resources don't have this strategy and such thinking so there is a mismatch between uh, the talent and the resources to operationalize that's the problem i think you know i am one of those tech ceos who leads an american company so uh, your your uh, your 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 insights on on what's happening in the bay area could be very relevant as we chart out the growth and the strategies in in the tech companies so any insights would be would be very very useful and i live in your same area love to drop you back and have a chat as well i would love to get to know you uh, i'm looking for you people like you because uh, people with resources people who have leadership position and leverage position when they come to an event like this and they respond in this way it's really music to my ears i've been waiting for 30 years to meet such people so i would suggest so i would suggest uh get my con- contact from nikunj remind me you know in a whatsapp or email that we talked who you are and let's set up a coffee or some chai in my house and you come and we'll talk and uh, i would love to do practical things with your help you are a very good information session here and i have just one two question in fact one you mentioned that freud university of chicago as a freud just saying something which is very authoritatively so in this country the justice department works very well so why can't we challenge that part okay so let me ask you see why can't we legally challenge uh, the use of freudian psychoanalysis on our deities gurus rituals i tried this this thing that this thing started 25 30 years ago i tried getting help but you know while everybody talks nobody want to take the bull by the horns and lead it the uh, our opponents are hiding under the protection of academic freedom they are saying in an academic world you are free to say that this is a theory well established called freudian psychoanalysis and mr x is behaving in this way and according to freud i will quote what freud says according to freud he is a male chauvinist and therefore i'm calling him and if he's upset that's not my problem that's freudian psychoanalysis so you see what they've done is they've created this adhikar called academic uh, you know in, in academic freedom which is itself a fraud because this academic freedom means that they are, they are looking after each other's freedom a guy like me says i'm using my freedom to criticize you they will say oh but you're not authorized we only we guys we have the thappa we have the stamp we are authorized so this adhikar has been snatched from our adhikaris to the western adhikaris the academicians that's why i don't work with them anymore after giving a few million dollars of grants and funding to these academic people to try and convert them and change them and put some sense in them i gave up and said you know what i'm going to fight them so the legal issue will be the the freedom of speech in this country is very strong you right. cannot right. Uh, fight on the, against that but there are laws on hate speech there are laws on uh, you know there are certain laws 
so somebody has to cross the threshold and you have to build a case it requires a lot of money you have to build a case that they have systematically written this it's caused harm it resulted in suicides it resulted in depression it resulted in people uh, you know losing their job or not having the courage like that like other minorities have you know like uh, lgbtq have made legal cases feminists have made legal cases these woke people have made legal cases hispanics so you know if you if hindus were documenting and building a, and to, it's a multi million dollar budget to be honest to be uh, the bottom line is in this country a legal action would take a lot of money but it would it could be very historic and nobody has done this uh, yet uh, and we i keep hearing this and a lot of people are emotionally very committed but it not it does not translate into actual action Um, great talk again. So, just curious. Uh, so, everyone in this room is quite aware of uh, these algorithms, right? And we know that this keeps manifesting in different forms. My concern is that we we don't see this awareness coming in uh, the youth, like younger kids or teenage, or even people who go into colleges, right? And we live in an online world these days, right? Hardly people like. my son for instance like he doesn't like to read books right so i'm just curious like all this information that we are gathering and and you have written some amazing books right is there a plan to take it online in in such a form where we can connect with uh, the people who have very short uh, attention span people yes. who like to live on facebook or thank you no i'll answer that i'll answer yeah. that so we have a list of 11 projects that we are looking for funding i have it is one page if somebody is interested i can give it to you and they they include things like not only the small books we want to make but also hindi translations we finally when i was in india i got a team of people who work for doordarshan and government of india hindi the hindi section uh, you know national book trust and all they very highly qualified hindi people but we need to hire them we need to pay salaries i mean the team will come to our side and they're not looking for big corporate salaries they're looking for some salaries So if I can put this team together we will crank out hindi versions of all our stuff and for so first we'll make small books then we'll make hindi books out of it then we have people who are interested in making documentaries this book this snakes in the ganga is 20 documentaries each one is a huge issue how to make it into a documentary and then there are people who want to who propose that they want to turn it into online e-learning so you can have an e-learning certificate 1 2 3 4 and train people but that again takes money so all of this is funding issue and i've never done a fundraiser i mean if, if, if we welcome if somebody want to give us donation they come online and do it but we never had a fundraiser because i'm so busy doing research so busy working hard producing output output becoming more and more productive at this age also trying my best that we haven't gone and spread awareness about our work and try to get support and be fundraising so we are limited we are limited with resources it's only the all the projects that you mention how to take how to take the knowledge down to the level of less attention span is very clear let me just tell you our strategy says we have four four part strategy we call it track a b c and d let me just explain a little bit track a is the heavy research original research that i do so this book and all the other books are track a something original discovery of these algorithms diagnosing the problem coming up with solutions remedies rebuttals that's the intellectual warfare is track a track b is training other scholars to think like me to continue this work after me to help me out right now so track b is we we are hiring people within the budget availability uh it, it preferably in india because we can hire at lower salary and we have very good smart people we have people who've done a btech and an mtech from iit who are working for us for a fraction of what their market value is we have an astrophysicist uh she is uh, in bangalore she is working with us so these are people who very highly qualified who've take decided not to work, not to maximize their income but come and join me full time so we need to pay such people and if we have that track b is train 
creating the next gen next generation team of scholars i would i have a few only because that's what we can afford but we have got candidates so we can we can bring in 30 40 50 people and really do a lot more work and also in track b we have swadeshi indology conference so we do we used to do two conferences a year to bring all these other scholars and they would then present papers on our topic so if i have written snakes in the ganga we are going to do two conferences next year and there will be many people presenting their findings their papers and we'll publish them encourage them to become scholars on the same topics that track b track c so each track takes it to a lower and lower level of people being able to understand it track a being the heaviest then b is less track c is online education that is where we we it's documentaries it's uh, training courses uh, it's it's certificate courses and so that requires subject matter expert from a track a and b to be turned into material for larger audiences so we would work with people who are experts in documentaries and we have done one we we've, we've <coughs> taken the book breaking india and there's an online course and about 30000 people have taken it so but we didn't have the funding to continue we could certainly do that and then track d is social media that is uh, organizing events and uh, social media discourse and all of that and getting more and more people uh, i did i i try to do all the four tracks myself but you know then i realized so for instance i spent a couple of years building up my facebook and i have 6.8 million followers on facebook 6.8 million on uh, then i started building uh, then i then this facebook started playing games with me saying that you are too much right wing in do all that you know all this nonsense that they do is do they do no longer support you because you're being very successful some people complain so then i started going on youtube and i built up half a million followers now youtube algorithm also sometimes want to hold me back so the social media we don't control and if you are too good then they'll also stop you at some point in time but then the other factor is it takes too much of my time so instead of me building my social media track c track d i decided that you know what let other people do that let kona do that let you know various other people do that i'll do my track a that's what i know how to do well and i'm 72 years old so i have to finish my 20 books so i should focus on what i do well and collaborate with other people and if they want to take my knowledge and we work in a collaborative way uh, rather than sort of doing it on the sly we can do it very openly where our knowledge our contribution gets turned into something more useful Uh, for people who have less attention span so all these track a b c d have been part of our strategy from the beginning and it's resource limited it's constrained by resources but thank you for your question